Whether you watch porn regularly, occasionally, or never at all, you may have wondered what causes such interesting effects. Why 91% of males and 60% of females... Oh wait, that must be the plumber. There are three main types of research on how watching porn affects your brain. The first type investigates how porn affects your brain in the specific moment you're watching the video. The second type investigates how your brain structure and function changes by watching porn over a long period of time. And the third looks at the psychological effects of porn on overall mental well-being. So let's dive right into the most arousing experience. The acquisition of knowledge. Okay, so the first type of study, the immediate effects of watching porn. The first thing to know is this part of your brain called the striatum is important in a porn addiction. The striatum has lots of cells, neurons that release dopamine, a crucial chemical driving reward and pleasure. How do we know that the striatum is important? From this study with 38 heterosexual males, half with compulsive sexual behavior and half without. Their brains were scanned using functional MRI whilst viewing non-pornographic and pornographic videos. The men with compulsive sexual behavior, compared to the healthy controls, had greater activation in the striatum. This group had striatums that just fired more whilst looking at porn, which indicates that people with compulsive sexual behavior have a particularly overactive striatum. Which brings us to, in my opinion, the most powerful study to know about this topic. This study reveals that a porn addiction may be rooted in the anticipation of watching porn, not actually watching porn. The researchers recruited people with something called PPU, problematic pornography use. This is where porn use is associated with feelings of anxiety, guilt, shame, a neglection of responsibilities and the inability to reduce the quantity being watched. Just to flag that PPU is not recognized as a standalone disorder in the DSM-5, the Diagnostic Manual for Mental Health Disorders. Instead, it's discussed under a broader hypersexuality disorder. Anyway, this insanely interesting study compared heterosexual men with PPU to men without PPU. Subjects were placed into an MRI scanner and shown a Q image of either a dollar sign or this drawing of a naked stick woman, which indicated what kind of rewarding image they were about to see. They were then shown a triangle or a circle and they had one second to say if it was a triangle or a circle by pressing a button. If they pressed the correct button in less than one second, they saw the promised rewarding image of either money or porn. So these cue images they saw are really, really important. If they saw this sign, they anticipated seeing a picture of money. If they saw this sign, they anticipated seeing porn. This experiment was done whilst their brains were scanned so the researchers could see how their brains responded to anticipating seeing money or porn and how their brains responded to the actual images of money or porn. Really clever study and the results are pretty climactic. We can't include that, can we? In comparison to the healthy controls, the men with PPU had increased activity in their striatum to anticipating seeing porn, but no difference whilst they actually watched the porn. Let that fact just digest in your mind for a second. No difference whilst watching porn, but increased activity to the anticipation of seeing porn. This is a fascinating finding, as it indicates that in people with PPU, the reward centers of the brain are only hyperactive to the anticipation of seeing porn, not actually watching porn. And this finding is actually extremely comparable to alcohol and smoking addictions. This paper demonstrates that after seeing images of alcohol, recovering alcoholics have higher levels of activation in the same area of the brain, the striatum. And this paper demonstrates similar findings for cigarette smokers. For someone with a porn addiction, I think this is a really useful piece of information to know to help fight against the urge. For balance though, this research doesn't establish that increased brain activity to anticipating seeing porn images is the cause of PPU. It may be the other way around, an effect of having PPU that's actually caused by something else. But this finding is interesting and conserved across different types of addictions and I think more people should know about it. Okay, the second type of study, the effects of long-term exposure to porn. These studies are imperfect. 
They get people to take surveys about porn across their lives, then scan everyone's brains to see what the differences are between the brains of people that have watched varying quantities of porn across their life. In this study, 64 healthy adult males reported hours of porn watched per week. On average, the group watched four hours per week, but the range was zero hours to 19.5 hours. They scanned all of their brains and investigated if the people that watched more porn had something called cerebral atrophy. Cerebral atrophy is a loss of brain cells and connections between those brain cells, neurons. This is found to happen in degenerative diseases such as Alzheimer's and Parkinson's and is visible in some MRI brain scans. The researchers found that people who spent more hours watching porn each week had a lower volume of grey matter in the striatum. The grey matter is heavily involved with information processing, so they found this correlation that the more porn a person watches, the more likely they are to have less grey matter in their striatum. And they also found that participants who consumed more pornographic material had less connectivity between their striatum and their prefrontal cortex. So more porn usage was correlated with less connectivity between the striatum, driving reward and pleasure, and the prefrontal cortex, which drives reasoning and impulse control. This would kind of make sense as a porn addiction is fueled by the desire for a rewarding behavior without the impulse control to rationalize why it's not good for you within the context of an addiction. So pretty interesting finding and kind of alarming. This research shows that consuming large quantities of porn across a lengthy period of time is associated with cerebral atrophy, a loss of brain matter. But incredibly important to caveat that this is a correlational study. None of these findings prove that watching porn causes you to have less grey matter and less connectivity. It could be the case that people with less grey matter and reduced connectivity are more likely to be addicted to watching porn. Also, to demonstrate that this is even neurologically relevant, you would have to show that the grey matter reduction is large enough to actually impair brain function. But the fact this correlation exists is definitely worthy of like taking note of and should be investigated further. Unfortunately, a conclusive long-term study would be really tricky. You'd have to track brain matter volume across time and measure porn use associated with the change. You would then have to control for the incredibly varied lives of people beyond their porn use. This would be a really tricky study requiring a lot of money and time, but would give a much more concrete answer to this question. Okay, studies looking at the psychological effects of porn, its links to depression, anxiety, and addiction should also be approached with a lot of caution. The intricacies of the human brain and the complexities of individual lives make it really tricky to determine how much of one's mental health is influenced by porn consumption. It's undeniable that some individuals are devastated by porn addictions, but others consume it without really experiencing any noticeable negative consequences. This contrast is also true for other things. Whilst recreational drugs can be catastrophic for some, others use them occasionally without any significant harm. This varied impact of pornography from a minor aspect of someone's life to a major source of distress shows just how differently porn can affect people's brains. There are many studies that show an association between a porn addiction and a high likelihood of depression, such as this one. But again, this study doesn't demonstrate that watching porn causes depression. It's possible that individuals with depression might turn to porn to seek a brief surge of dopamine. There's also research about how people perceive their own porn use and I think this is what it may come down to. This research from 2019 surveyed several thousand Polish students and the results showed that 80% watch porn. Within this group, 10% watched every day, one quarter of people in relationships experienced beneficial effects from watching porn, 51% had made at least one attempt to quit, 20% admitted to neglecting responsibilities to watch porn, and 64% believed porn may have a negative impact on their mental health. These are some unbelievably high percentages. Extrapolating out of these numbers would make a porn addiction one of the most common addictions in the world affecting hundreds of millions of people. I also wanted to say that neuroimaging studies conducted whilst participants view porn have mostly been carried out on heterosexual males. This study quite uniquely looked at heterosexual and homosexual males and found activation in the hypothalamus whilst only viewing pornography videos of their respective sexual orientation. But it would be good for there to be more studies on this topic to look at porn addictions across all sexualities. Porn addictions affect a lot of different people 
people and we need effective ways to try and help everyone. There are also other ways porn is extremely harmful. Children are being exposed to porn between the ages of 9 and 13 on average, leading to distorted views of intimacy and consent, skewed beauty standards, self-esteem issues, anxiety around body dissatisfaction, and many other issues. And there's also the exploitation of some performers and videos uploaded without consent. All of which is an argument for better regulation of porn rather than no porn, but it still is within this topic. Also, you can find studies online that demonstrate that porn both promotes sexual violence and reduces sexual violence, and I do not know how to unpick the truth of what actually happens there, but it's a really, really important question for society to ask and figure out the answer to. <sighs> what is my conclusion? I think it's perfectly possible for someone to watch porn without any damaging effects, but it's also possible to have a very serious, debilitating addiction. This opens up a huge spectrum in the middle where everyone else falls into. I think that where you consider yourself on this spectrum is a significant factor in how negatively watching porn affects you. If you associate watching porn with feelings of guilt and frustration or feel addicted, then reduction is a really good thing. I mean, how easily could you spend the next two weeks without watching? If the answer is like, yeah, pretty easily or absolutely impossible, that answer's kind of telling. I'll put some links in the description to websites with more information on how to approach reducing porn use. I also think the pornography website should carry warnings about the potentially damaging effects like cigarettes and alcohol packaging. I mean, it's nuanced. It's not that porn is horrifically destructive for everyone and should be banned, but it should be placed in the same category as smoking, drinking, and using social media. Potentially risky things that consenting adults can choose to engage with whilst being informed about the risks. What do you think about all of this? It would be great to hear your thoughts in the comments. Luckily, this channel's small, so I can reply to everyone. Anyway, thank you so much for watching, especially if you got to this stage of the video. Let me know if you have any questions and I'll see you in the next one.